Okay, so now we're going to get into the movement portion of <clears throat> this animation. And I just want to let you know that there's this part requires a bit of um, what I call tinkering, or it's going to require a little bit of testing. And that's really what a lot of coding is, uh, testing things out, making changes. Um, so what we're going to do for this one is we want our character here to spin. Okay, that can be one of the kind of animations that we want. Now, if I just click on any of these here, right? So these are my turn options. If I just click on them, I'll see my character start to spin. Now, there's nothing particularly smooth about it. You can tell that the character, every time I click, they're moving, but it's very choppy. If I want to bring that character back, I can either go back to what I feel is my original starting position. I think something like that. Um, so if I bring that block in, that's not really going to help me because it's only going to turn the character 15 degrees, which is this. It's a very small turn. So what we really want to do is we want to start to use some of our looping options or our repeating options. So this block, and you'll see it fits very nicely. The shadow starts to pop up. And this one kind of, the blue one nests inside of this yellow one, yellow orange, I'm not sure. Um, so this is going to make it repeat 10 times. So if I click this now, okay, it's a little bit smoother. Um, I can see that it's getting the, the turn block to repeat itself 10 times in a row. Now I want to make sure my character is back in my starting position. Okay, one thing about Scratch and something that maybe discourages people is it's, it's difficult to get back sometimes to the starting position. Um, so that you can actually work your animation all the way through. I don't want my character to look like this, and I can't click the stop sign. It's not going to work that way. So what I can do is I'm just going to turn my character. I went back to motion here. I'm going to turn my character okay, back to the original starting position. So that turn took me to about here. I want to try and go all the way around and do like a full 360. So I'm going to click in here. I'm going to try and edit and I'm going to say maybe 20, right? And this is, this is the process of testing. So now when I click this, okay, so it got me almost all the way there. So again, I'm going to reset my character. I'm going to click here. One, two, three, four, five. So you know what? I'm going to maybe change this to 25. And I'm going to see what this looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, but you know what? I think 24 was the one. So if I just move back one, yeah, that's it right there. So I'm going to say 24, and this should be my full rotation. There it is. Perfect. Um, so I'm going to actually go ahead and add that now on. And when I click up here at the top, what I should see is my speech and then my spin. Perfect. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to move my character, or have my character glide over to this bird. Okay, so they've come in, they've said their speech, I'm um, here to help, they've done a flashy move and now I'm going to have them glide over. So one thing I want to do is I want to pay attention down here to where my character is. This sprite right now is on the x-axis, it's at negative 150, and on the y-axis, 89. It's not super important to know exactly where those numbers are on the canvas. It's just really important that we know what the numbers are and that we keep that in mind. And actually, what you'll see over here is that your pre they, they build into this program a block that has those coordinates already in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that over here on my workspace. I'm not going to connect it. And I'm going to go over to control. And I'm going to bring over in control a button that says when the flag is clicked. Okay, so that's this green flag up here. I want my character to... And I don't want them to glide. Sorry, I'm going to delete this. I want them to go to negative 150, 89. Right now, my sprite is at negative 150, 89. So this is like my reset option. Okay, this I, I pre-plan this. I have my reset option. Um, if you hear a fan in the background, that's just my computer. It's working pretty hard, so now the fan's starting to go. Okay, so now I have this, this block in here that gets me back to my starting position. 
And what I actually want is to bring in a glide option. Okay, a glide is gonna be really smooth. Oh, sorry, that's glide to random position. That's not what I want. I want this one right here. And I want the character to glide for maybe three seconds. Okay, so it's gonna be a smooth transition. Now I can't have them glide to negative 150, 89, because that's where the sprite is already. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and have them glide to somewhere about here. How do I figure out where that is? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my building sprite and notice the location has changed. My building sprite is at 148, negative three. Okay, 148, negative three. So what I'm gonna try to do is with that knowledge, 148 on the x-axis and negative three on the y-axis. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna say, can you glide to negative three 148 okay and I will run that with a click I'm gonna click here on the purple code to see what happens so I speak I spin and I'm starting to glide and that is not what I wanted so I'm gonna reset with my flag okay, I'm gonna click reset here that'll bring me back to my starting position and I'm just trying to see you know what I just did I did Okay, and that was an actual mistake. So this is 148, negative three. I did negative 148, which meant I just kind of moved down a little bit. Let's see if this makes a difference here. There's my spin. Okay, this is more of what I want. All right, perfect. But I, so I'm looking at this and I actually don't want my hero to be kind of behind the house um, because it doesn't really work for the animation. So I'm gonna reset, okay, I've built in this reset option. Whenever I click this flag, it's gonna take me back to my starting position. And I'm gonna to have to change this value a little bit. So I'm gonna go down quite a bit. I'm gonna to go to 100 and I'm gonna test that out. So instead of 148, now it's 100. Let's see how this works. Okay, so it's still a little too far. I'm in the building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to really, I'm going to really drop this value, like pretty low, um, and I'm going to see where I end up. Okay, this is the process of me trying to figure out what's best, what looks best. So I said 20 on the x, negative three on the y, and let's see where I end up there. That's pretty good. Uh, I I would be pretty content with that. I mean, the, the arms, the arms a little bit behind the building. Um, so we might change it just, just a bit. Uh, but other than that, I think it's good to go. So once I'm there, oh, okay. So my character just turned, okay. Not to panic. What I can do here is I can go back to my motion and I'll just turn my character back into their starting position. Okay. That's a little too much. I'll bring them back. And that looks to me like their starting position. So if ever you find like your characters like this and you're clicking the flag and it's not resetting, you can always just click right here on the turn to get your character back in their position. When they finally get there, what I wanna end this off with a message, um, a quick message, and I might say, hop on. All right, so now when I play this, this is what it'll look like. Perfect. Okay, so that's my scene. I can reset my scene. And what I might wanna do is I'm gonna bring in a block that says, when I click the space bar, all this is gonna happen. So now I'm not gonna click with my mouse anymore. I'm actually just gonna hit the space bar, which you should hear. And that will run my program. Okay, and when I'm when I'm ready to, I can just reset my program from the starting position. That's where I'm gonna stop with, with you for now. Um, you can definitely go back to some of these videos here and see what other options you can add in. But you can imagine if you wanted to continue this, you could have at the end of this scene, you could probably have something like if you brought in a new sprite, right? Because the bird is not its own sprite. Okay, I'm just looking at this here. The building and the bird are one sprite together. So if you put um, a different sprite, a different character on the roof, let's say over here, and maybe that character says something like, please help, um, you could have as a next option 
in your program, you, and then maybe the two of them start to float away. Right, those are just some of the other options, or maybe they just quickly jump, move onto the back. Okay, they would glide over onto the back, and then maybe this character with the other character would make their way off screen up into the top right, which would involve a few more um, glide blocks, and you would have to really get a sense for the location of where you want to move. But this is a really quick way to tell a story. Um, it might be an interesting way for you to do a project in the future. Um, especially if you're just trying to share information with people, you can bring in some different sprites. If I just go back here to costumes, you can bring in all different types of different uh, sprites, um, animals. I'm just thinking like a biodiversity or something like this, and maybe the character is walking around um, and telling stuff about the scene they're in, about the ecosystem that they're in, um, really you have a bunch of different options for stories that you can tell where your characters are moving around, okay, they can talk, uh, they have some type of motion. You can also change the background. Right now we just have kind of a, a blue sky, but you do have options, um, a lot of different options for backgrounds, and you can set your scene. I'm just trying to see if there's one that would work here that kind of makes sense. Uh, probably not a beach and not inside and not underwater. So you're not just an outdoor the school. Okay, well you can also, um, if, I'm, if I'm seeing this correctly, a wetland could work maybe. I think you can also bring in your own backgrounds. Maybe I'll just change it to something more simple. Blue sky with, there we go. Okay, so that also works. I'll reset and there's the setting of my scene. Um, so here we walk through a couple of different blocks um, some of the look blocks for talking, some of the motion blocks for turning and gliding. Um, this control block, really important as a, a loop, um, and we're repeating there. And then we've built in for us a way to reset our figure to their starting position, which is really important because I know the first couple times that I used Flash, I couldn't figure out how to reset my character. And then I just decided that it wasn't worth it for me to continue. I couldn't figure it out, okay? I just noticed something here, 24 turns at 15 degrees. I just did the math on my calculator and 24 times 15 is 360 degrees, which makes sense then that this amount of turns at 15 degrees gets me back to my starting position. So that's something to keep in mind too. I didn't even have to uh, tinker with it. I could have just done the math there. All right, I'm gonna stop my animation uh, and I'm going to stop the recording here and I'm going to encourage you if you've made it this far to try and add something new to your scene, whether a new character, a new motion um, or new text and also encourage you to check out some of their instructional videos right here um, and yeah, just explore and explore with Scratch.